Upon reaching the cave, Qasim witnessed the emergence of the companions of the cave. They wore distinctive blue thobes, slightly shorter in length than the customary thobes of today, with their length falling around 6 inches shorter, modestly above the ankles. Qasim then engaged in conversation with one of the men who approached him. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Jika teman-teman mengingat atau melihat kembali dalam Al-Quran Bagaimana para kisah Nabi terdahulu Yang menjadi pertanyaan orang-orang sesudahnya Contoh seperti misal kejadian pada Nabi Muhammad SAW Menceritakan kisah sebenarnya dari sumber yang sama yaitu Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Tentang mukjizatnya Nabi Musa AS Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala berfirman dan ingatlah ketika kami membelah laut untukmu Sehingga kamu dapat kami selamatkan dan kami tenggelamkan Fir'aun dan pengikut-pengikut Fir'aun Sedang kamu menyaksikan Quran Surah Al-Baqarah 2 ayat 50 Dan tentang kisah hendak disembelihnya Nabi Ismail alaihissalam oleh ayahnya Nabi Ibrahim alaihissalam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala berfirman maka ketika anak itu sampai pada umur sanggup berusaha bersamanya Ibrahim alaihissalam berkata Wahai anakku, sesungguhnya aku bermimpi bahwa aku menyembelihmu Maka pikirkanlah bagaimana pendapatmu Dia Ismail menjawab Wahai ayahku, lakukanlah apa yang diperintahkan Allah kepadamu Insya Allah engkau akan mendapatiku termasuk orang yang sabar Quran Surah as sofat 37 ayat 102 di mana kejadian-kejadian ini bukanlah pada masa Nabi Muhammad SAW. Nah, di kesempatan ini, ternyata kembali lagi terlihat suatu kemiripan sejarah yang berulang. Telah terjadi pada Muhammad Qasim. Ia memiliki hal apa yang pernah Rasulullah SAW alami yang saya sebut tadi. Muhammad Qasim mengetahui melalui mimpinya tentang kelompok Ashabul Kafi ini. Penasaran dengan kisahnya? Mari kita simak videonya. And they see the sword in my hand. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In a dream, Qasim saw himself at the foot of a mountain. As he stood there, Qasim intuitively recognized the mountain as the very one that contained the cave in which the noble companions of the cave, sleepers of Ephesus or the Ashab al-Kahf, sought solace and refuge from their tyrannical pagan society. Intrigued by this realization, Qasim climbed the mountain. Upon reaching the cave, Qasim witnessed the emergence of the companions of the cave. They wore distinctive blue thobes, slightly shorter in length than the customary thobes of today, with their length falling around 6 inches shorter, modestly above the ankles. Qasim then engaged in conversation with one of the men who approached him. Qasim greeted the man with Assalamu Alaikum, to which the man responded in kind, replying, Wa Alaikum Assalam. The discussion between them was marked by the man's eloquence and a profound aura of piety surrounded him, which led Qasim to believe that this man was the Amir or leader of the two groups. Curious about their collective existence, Qasim posed the question to the companion, inquiring about their number and the significance that many people attribute to them. In response, the man conveyed that they were a group of 11 individuals with their faithful dog serving as the 12th member. These 11 companions were divided into two groups. Qasim doesn't recall the exact number between the two groups, but it was either one of the groups consisting of 6 and 5 or one group consisting of 7 and 4 companions and their dog was the twelfth companion. Qasim believes that the latter option with seven and four and the dog as the twelfth companion was the more authentic one. And regarding this matter, Allah knows best. It was also shown to Qasim that any intruder who tried to enter the cave immediately retreated overwhelmed by fear. The intruders would experience an intense flash of lightning accompanied by what Qasim interpreted as an electric shock static shock to be more precise, causing the intruders to recoil and hastily flee overwhelmed with fear. It is Qasim's opinion that the sensation of fear experienced by the intruders resulted from being shocked by this electrical phenomena, coupled with the flash of lightning. 
Today, humanity has a general understanding of natural phenomena, such as lightning in the sky during a rainstorm. However, the distinct feeling of being struck by lightning is known only to those who have endured it. All right, talk about a close call. A 22 News viewer was nearly struck by lightning while outside of their home in Springfield. Hey, watch this. Yeah. I could feel like a static electricity starting to build up, like your hair, when your hair stands up, and then it got really intense, and then right away after, within two seconds, the lightning, I heard the loud bang, and the, I saw the white flash, but... Uh... As to how the flash of lightning was initiated, Allah knows best. This wasn't shown in detail, but it is possible that their unintentional contact with the cave's walls could have resulted in static shock and triggered a brief flash of light. In another dream, Qasim found himself within the confines of his own home. His attention was drawn to a ladder. As the dream unfolded, Qasim observed a group of misfits attempting to gain entry only to be confronted by a sudden and intense lightning strike akin to the same lightning strike that the intruders who would try to venture within the cave encountered. Startled by the electrifying discharge, these intruders swiftly retreated in fear, mirroring the reaction of the intruders from the Asahab al-Kahf dream. To Qasim, it appeared as if the intruders had experienced an electric shock, causing them to hastily recoil. Faced with the imminent danger, their response was to flee. Driven by the instinctive belief that if they do not flee, they would die. The thunderous sound accompanying the lightning strike further intensified the scene, invoking a sense of awe and fear. Upon delving into the Quranic account of the companions of the cave, as mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf, we encounter an intriguing narrative that sheds light on the nature of their sleep and the events surrounding them. Allah describes how the ears of the sleepers were veiled, rendering them oblivious to any noise during their slumber within the cave. Additionally, Allah reveals that had someone come across them during their dormant state, that person would have been filled with terror and fled from their presence. Scholars have offered various interpretations to clarify the reasons behind this apprehension. Some suggest that the individual's awe-inspiring appearance endowed by Allah would have evoked fear and unease. Others propose that their imposing stature or their eyes appearing open as if they were awake and ready to converse could have been the cause of alarm. Nonetheless, each scholar presents their own perspective. Yet in Qasim's dream, another interpretation unfolds, aligning with Allah's mention of veiled ears and the intruders being filled with terror. Qasim's dream portrays the intruders being terrified and fleeing upon attempting to enter the cave, as Allah had mentioned in the Qur'an. The reason shown in Qasim's dream was due to the flash of lightning. The area where the companion slept is speculated to not be that far off from the entrance. This would indicate that whomever would try to enter the cave would also see the sleepers inside. To add, Qasim's dream correlates with the notion that Allah covered the ears of the sleepers, emphasizing the connection between the veiled hearing of the sleepers so they wouldn't hear anything and the thunderous sound of lightning which the intruders encountered while trying to enter the cave. Furthermore, the Qur'an poses a mystery concerning the exact number of companions and their canine within the cave. However, it also mentions that the precise count of the sleepers is known by a few who are aware of this knowledge. So the intriguing question arises, could it be that the Mahdi, whom I believe is Muhammad Qasim, is among the select few who possesses knowledge about the exact count of the sleepers of the cave? Within the Quranic narrative, Allah cautions engaging in futile debate or speculation except on matters that are clear and apparent. And this matter was shown to Qasim as clear as day. And now you too have this knowledge. And as always, Allah knows best.